And all across the nation for the past four years, the little preacher has been going up and down, winning lost humanity with the message of the Master. At this time, let me introduce to you little Marjo. Howdy, neighbors. May the Lord bless you. When I would go to a press conference for an interview, my father would march me in full outfit right up to the news editor and say, I want to see the editor. They would be so shocked at a six-year-old kid coming up with a full handshake. And I would say, you know, how do you do, Mr. Smith? My name is Marjorie Gortner. I'm in town to give the devil two black eyes. The guy's falling out of his seat, and he would say something back like, you're a minister? Yes, that's right. The Lord called me to preach when I was four years old. Do you memorize your sermons? Absolutely not. You know, I get them in my sleep. Sometimes I get them while I'm driving down the road. But they all come from God. If the law of the state of California does not define what a minister is and recognizes the child of four years as a minister, then we should bring about a change in the law and insist that a minister be at least 21 years Those of age. Those whom God are joined together, let not man, let us enter. Raymond, salute your bride. As far as I'm concerned, a thing like this savors of a sordid sensationalism that is disgusting. It is a dangerous reflection on the sanctity of Mary. The name Marjo is a combination of Mary and Joseph. When I was born, it was really a miracle because I was born by cesarean. And when they opened up my mother, the cord was wrapped around my neck three times. So I guess I did start off with a legitimate miracle. <laughs> At this time, I would like to present to you the world's youngest ordained minister and the world's youngest evangelist. Marjo Gartner. Marjo started preaching when he was three and a half. Today is Marjo's eighth. I remember my mother going through very, uh, well, correctional activities, you might say, to get me prepared to say uh, the wedding ceremony because I had to re recite the whole uh, Episcopal ceremony verbatim and write my name on the uh, certificate. I'm not sure, but I think they had, you know, a preaching number planned for me coming from such a long background of preachers and my mother being a very flamboyant evangelist. As a child, I'd want to go out and play, and we'd have to spend hours and hours, you know, memorizing. And my mind would slip. Finally, my mother would begin to lose her patience with me, and she would put a pillow over my head, maybe, and smother me for a little bit. Other times, she'd hold me under the water faucet, but she never wanted to put any marks on my body because she knew I had to be in front of the press, and so she'd never hit me or anything. I thank God for my darling Christian mother that pointed me to Jesus. If we had more good Christian mothers that would teach the boys and girls how to play more instead of drinking cocktails and smoking filthy old cigarettes, we would have a better America, better men and women, and not so much juvenile delinquency. 
there would be, you know, gestures like when I would say Jesus, my arms would have to go out, or when I would say the devil, I would go forward. And she had this incredible set of signals. They were like if she would say, oh Jesus, if I was going too slow, or if she said glory to God, you know, that meant you better speed up and go a little bit faster. Then later on they came up with more signals like praise God meant, you know, you've got the people where you need them, you better take an offering and raise some money. <laughs> oh, Listen to me. My name is Marjo Gortner. I'm only four years old. I'm coming to your town to shoot the devil down. So come and go with me, and surely you will see me preach the old time gospel and have a jubilee. Everyone praise the Lord. <laughs> I guess I was sort of precocious or, uh, and I had an ego, you know, and I enjoyed the people and I enjoyed the attention that I was getting. I remember I really enjoyed, everyone was very nice to me and uh, my reaction to it, like I didn't understand, I didn't really, I can't really think of a time that I ever believed in God or in, you know, and I've ever thought that it was a miracle of God that I preached. I don't think even with all the people. Uh, gathering around me, you know, thousands of people saying this has to be a miracle. Surely, you know, God has called you and all that. I don't think with all that, I just, you know, knew that I could do it well. And my parents had trained me, but I never really tripped out and thought that I was some uh, real miracle child of any kind. Okay, August 7th, Marjo, roll two. 7254 motel or hotel scene. Slate it. That's terrific. Last slate, but this is August. <laughs> this is August 10th. This is August 10th. What picture are we on? Two. Three. Three. All yours. It's all mine. Fantastic. Have any of you had any experience with the Pentecostal <laughs> movement before? I think that's the main thing. Or what kind of religious backgrounds, if any, do you have? Uh, Larry's got a lot. I'm an angry ex -catholic. Okay, what's yours? I used to be a communist, no. I used to be a Baptist. <laughs> How long ago? You haven't gone to church recently or anything? Not lately. Okay, number one, uh, the little lovey locks have to go. <laughs> no, just remember, you're dealing with people, they, they say they love you, right? And they all, they love Jesus. And they love you like if you came in and you weren't part of a film crew, they would like turn to you and want to help you to get saved. But being part of the film crew, you're going to have to let this go so that you don't get bothered because a natural thing that they have is to want to like, they're zealots. They want to convert everyone. They want you, you know, to be saved. And if you look like this, they'd be approaching you immediately. And because everyone, the whole reason for the whole thing is like, can I get someone saved? You know, can I lead someone to Jesus? Can I, you know, win someone else? And so you've got to like cut the locks. And I thought I'd get a, a wig, you know. I'd get a wig and I'd put it up and then during the shooting for the payoff at the end, you know, I would oh, just do sound and I'd rip off the wig and give myself to Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I can make a lot of money with you. you know, it's so good. <laughs> if they ask you if you say it, instead of don't hesitate about it. Never say, well, uh, yes, I'm uh, the right way. Well, we want to help you and they'll want to lead you. Well, here you want a little scripture, you know, and this, maybe this will give you a little comfort. You just come right back and look straight in the eye and say, yes, brother, and I'm washed in the same blood as you. Great. You know, I mean, it all comes in the blood. You'll be hearing all these songs. Power in the blood. Are you washed in the blood? I mean, it's a very bloody, gory religion that's going down, you know. As long as you say you're washed in the blood, ah, oh, it's cool. How suspicious you are they going to be of everybody, though? Is Are they actually going to be laying in suspicious. No, they're on, remember, they're on your side because they accept me as real, number one. And so me bringing you in there, they've already accepted you. The only way that there would be a bust is if one of you blow it. That's why, you know, you've got to be very... I'm actually over-cautioning you so that you'd be really careful because no one is going to say, well, I wonder about those people. Again, there's the Hollywood, the movies and things like that you've got to be careful of, but uh, you want to just be, you know, prepared for it all. And another thing, no smoking. You. <laughs> Abs absolutely. And listen, you can't even go outside of the tent or an auditorium and smoke on the grounds. I mean, and nothing in your pockets, nothing, and you got, and you got to use binaca. <laughs> I mean, I carry a whole bunch, you know. How many sacrifices are going to make for this job? Well, it's all for Jesus. I mean, you know, <laughs> he did a lot for you, man. As long as you have that. I mean, right, right. You just, you know, it's all under the blood, right? All that, you know. I used to smoke. I used to drink. Like, you know, I've got this uh, riff that you go through sometimes. You know, we go for seven years. You know, I was a heroin addict, pill dropper, LSD tripper, high rise.
sliding and low sliding, busting heads and dropping reds, kicking in doors and banging whores, setting tires and slashing fires. But then I met a man who was hung up for my hang-ups, you know. I mean, you know, that's the kind of test where you give up all that stuff, you know, that's, that's all, you know. Hey, another thing. What if they say, what kind of movies do you people usually see? <laughs> <laughs> Sandy War films? No, you know, no a lot of documentary mo movements and, you know, and you, that you really uh, become very interested in this growing Jesus movement that's happening. And listen, I mean, I can tell by looking like some of you that you're into women maybe a little bit. You can't chase any of the little loveys around the tent. A lot of these girls, there's like revival groupies too. Like, really? That'll hit on you. Sure, man. I mean, they'll see you walking around. They'll see the film. Listen, keep it in your pants. I mean, you, can't. <laughs> you cannot in any way, don't even, don't even flirt at all because they'll come up. I mean, just be nice and friendly and smile. But you, you cannot get involved with these chicks at all because that's one rule that I definitely established. It makes it really hard for me traveling, living in motels and that is that uh, I never take out a girl from the church or in the church, you know. I stick with airline stewardesses. Are we going to film Marjo's crucifixion when they find out about all this? No. <laughs> what will happen when they find out about that? What will happen when they find out about that? Well, I'm hoping that they'll see, you know, that it's not necessary to look to some to some person to, like, you know, jerk you off to get off and put your belief in. <laughs> Me getting on the stage, the dancing, the preaching, that's fun. But the things that have to come down about the sin, the burning, the hell, that's really a drag, you know. And I'm hoping that maybe they'll see that that's not where it's at, so that you can, like, you could go if you want to do it in church or at a rock concert, as long as you get off, that's okay, because you don't have to worry about, you know, everyone someday going dangling up to heaven. We're going to walk on those golden streets, you know. can just see Jesus on his way up. Hallelujah. Going up into the sky. I'm going up. Hallelujah. And I can see him as he starts to go up. My, my, my. And what does the Bible say when he got up there? Praise God. He sat down. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Whenever you hear of a high priest sitting down, that means that his work is finished. Hallelujah. So when Jesus sat down, brother, the Holy Ghost had to get up. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. I see that Holy Ghost as it begins to come down. I see those 120 people as they make their way up into the upper room. Oh, hallelujah. They shut the windows. They lock the doors for fear of their lives. But I see them as they got down on their knees and they began to pray and I see the Holy Ghost as cloven tongues of fire were upon them hallelujah and oh my the Holy Ghost finally found a permanent resting place hallelujah. hallelujah he wants a permanent resting place in your life have you given the Holy Ghost some resting place? Or have you given him a full resting place? Lift up your hands tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lift up your hands and worship the Lord.
praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so real tonight. If you can't feel the Holy Ghost tonight, man, you're dead and you don't know it. So why don't you praise him? Why don't you call upon his name? Why don't you worship the Lord tonight? Oh, lift up your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some people, you see, they've taken these prayer claws for their son or their daughter who is in drugs or dope addiction. And they've given that prayer call to them. And I've had many testimony of a young person after they got one of these prayer claws, they were delivered from drugs. How many believe that God can work this way? Do you believe it? Praise the Lord. I want you to get out the largest bill that you have right now. If you believe, if you don't have that much faith, then you shouldn't come down anyhow. Even young people, anyone who wants to come down, if you want to believe for someone in your life, I want you just to give us a $20 bill is the largest bill you got, then I want you to get that out. If it's a 10, I want you to get that out. If it's only a dollar bill, I want you to get that out. But I'm asking you to prove God with whatever the largest offering that you have tonight. Anyone else who wants to right now, stand to your feet. All right, I want you to make your way. And as I lay hands on you tonight, I want us to sing that chorus, There's Victory in Jesus. By the key of A or A flat. Hallelujah. Everyone sing, Well, I've got victory in Jesus. I sing. Oh, 
is God's day. And if it's God's day, it's your day. Hallelujah. This is the day of the children of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother, say Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Say Jesus. Say it again, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, brother. Be loose. Be set free right now. That's right. Say Jesus. Just say Jesus. There's the experience where you say you're saved, then there's the fire baptism when you get the Holy Ghost, and that's the tongues thing. And they love to work people over. You've got to, like, shoot in on this. When you see people gathering around people and start laying hands on and praying with someone, you've got to, like, come in with the camera, too. It's very important because they'll be laying hands on someone, and the poor person will be saying, you know, thank you, Jesus. Now, this is a person that's already saved, but they're getting the baptism. And someone will be standing there going, you know, and the poor person will be standing there and they're not saying anything. Then after a while, about four or five more will gather around and they'll start doing the same thing. You know, come on, speak it out, speak it out. Till all of a sudden, the person will, you know, get so overwhelmed by the thing that they start going, you know, and the next thing, you know, oh, that's it, you've got it. Like, they feel good. We've got another one, you know. Then they'll go on to the next person. Hey, my God, hallelujah, I come against all the powers of Satan in Jesus Christ's name right now. I rebuke the powers of darkness. Oh, Yalabas, the enemy, Yalabas, Thank you. Coming from you, I think that's a compliment. Find out, find out where that dove, dove went. Well, that climax on that dove was it. I like that. <laughs> I got that when I was down in Texas. You know Fitzgerald? Yeah, well, Fitzgerald. I preached that the first time in his church. <laughs> You camp the big stuff and I'll camp this. Okay. You, you gonna trust me? Oh, I think I'll trust you. Okay. <laughs> 20, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, no, thank you, Jesus. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Jesus is so good to me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise the Lord. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I feel good in my soul. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, sure isn't as heavy as it used to be, though, in the old days. Wow. It's really heavy then. I can remember how I used to have to go down and work with my mother and father, the whole thing, money, money, from the time I was four years. I really supported them, you know, when I was a child, come to think about it. I remember how they used to send me down into the aisles, and I wore these little velvet pants and uh, Lord Fontoin suits with satin shirts, but my mother would sew, like, extra pockets into the suit so I could stuff money. And they would announce tonight, now, everyone tonight that gives $20, little Marjorie's going to come down and give you a kiss. All these little lovely old ladies that wanted to get their fingers in my old curly locks. Then after I'd fill up my pockets, I'd come back and my father would alleviate me of the money. I don't even remember what town it was in exactly, but I know I remember is he took off. We were in a meeting. He left a note. He, he preached the meeting one night, and if I remember right, I think he took the offering too. <laughs> I don't know how much came in. As far as I can guess, maybe about $3 million from the time I was 4 to 14. And I have no idea what happened to that money. I know that I never saw it, or I never got any piece of it for my education or anything. I traveled with my mother for about uh, close to two years. Novelty was wearing off of a child preaching. Our money had run out. We were more or less living at that time from meeting to meeting. Finally, I guess I was uh, close to 15, about 14 and a half. I remember we were in Los Angeles at a meeting. I said to my mother, I said, this is going to be the last time I preach. I said, I'm not going to do it anymore. So I stopped. I spent from then the next two and a half years, I met an uh, older woman uh, at, on the beach in, in a nightclub, and we danced. And uh, 
she invited me into the home and I lived with her. And this time was uh, very, uh, a transitional period. It was uh, a good change for me. Uh, all I can say is I felt toward her more like I would have liked to have felt toward my mother or toward a mother. Uh, it just felt good to have someone care for me as a person. I mean, I didn't have to get up and preach. I didn't have to uh, put on a performance at night. I could just be myself and like uh, she took care of me and loved me. Do you feel that you missed out on a lot? That not, most kids between the ages of 4 and 18 not, 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 not to get into? At 18, I was really bitter. I was going to get lawyers and sue them because I felt I'd supported them. They gave me no money. I went through that adolescence thing of being very bitter. And you know, there were so many things that I was naive. There was little things I had to find out just about life. I never told anyone about uh, the life I led as a preacher. Never, I took all my scrapbook clippings, everything I had, and I sort of hid them away. And even my closest friends at the time didn't know. I felt this strong resentment uh, toward mainly my father, my mother too, but uh, mainly toward my father because I was a child and he hadn't put any trust fund away. But then I started, you know, hanging out with people who were uh, into nonviolent movements and so forth. And I just sort of began to find out within myself that you can't uh, hold resentment or uh, strong things against other people. No sense in hating anyone or holding hatred toward any people. That's ridiculous. The only person that's going to hurt is me. Why should I hate him? I mean, he did his thing, you know, and that was cool. Why should I hate him? I believe in karma. And those things, will, I don't need to take care of it. All those things that you do bad will eventually someday come back on your head. And, you know, I just think that'll take care of itself to him.
to praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This afternoon that I'm going to relate to you is no different than any other afternoon except I had a visit from Jesus. Praise the Lord. She put me up to sleep. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I remember I awoke. When I awoke, I was seeing a vision. I remember I looked up out of my little bed and I saw a mass of people. They were perishing. They were crying out for help. They were crying, somebody do something. Now remember, I'm only four years old. And I remember I sat up in my little bed and I looked up and I said, someone help all those people. Then a voice spoke back to me just as clear as those standing right alongside that bed. And that voice said, Marjo, you can help them. And I remember I looked down at myself and I thought, well, I'm just a little boy. I'm only four years old. What could I possibly do? What could I possibly say? And you know that voice spoke back to me and said, As I was with David, so will I be with you. Hallelujah. As I was with Jeremiah, so will I be with you. Then God spoke the crucial word. He said, Will you preach the word? Right there at the age of four, I had a decision to make. And I said, Yes, Lord, I will. Hallelujah. And I dedicated my life to God. Praise the Lord. And you know, I fell back in my bed, and I had just the greatest peace and tranquility, and I even went right back to sleep. I never said a word to my mother and father. That night was a church night, and I got up. The choir was up there to sing, and they announced, you know, that I was going to sing my little song. But I said something different. I said, you know, folks, I'm a preacher too. Praise the Lord. And I began to preach. And I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost began to fall. Hallelujah. And there were people who came running to give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of hearing the little words of a child. I remember one lady in Louisville, Kentucky. She came down in a long prayer line. I don't know how many I prayed for, maybe 100, 150. But as she came down, she had an open running cancer right on the side of her face. And I remember I reached out and I put my hand right on that cancer. My mother, she pulled my hand back. She didn't want me to touch that open sore. But I went on ahead and I prayed for her. She went on and I knew that God had done something. The very next night, that lady came back. She was sitting right in the front row. That night when she went home, that cancer had dissolved and run completely down her face. She was healed by the power of God. And the only thing that was left was a little irritation mark of little pink skin. But the skin was new like a baby. Hallelujah. Only because she believed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and praise Him tonight. Glory, hallelujah. Well, go ahead, praise the Lord. Praise Him tonight. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. your hands and praise the Lord. So lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. If you can't feel God here tonight, you're dead and you don't know it. Because the Holy Spirit is here tonight. He's here to meet your every need. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I want you to do the next thing. I want you to come. I want you to come across this ramp. And I want to just lay my hand on you and pray for you tonight. Then you can return to your seat. Everyone just move out tonight. Praise the Lord. Just stand right here. Everyone just move out. Come around this way, please. Around to my left. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, use my brother as never before. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister, let him touch you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the little children, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister, the joy of the Lord's all over you tonight. Why don't you praise him? Say, thank you, Jesus. I believe he's going to touch you right now. Say, thank you, Jesus. Sister, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is alive tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister, start to praise God. Hallelujah. Sister, even tonight, even tonight, may God use you in a greater way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost work through you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, use my brother. Quicken him tonight from head to soul in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, tonight. Bless the little child. Thank you, Jesus, for my young sister tonight. Lord, use her. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost move. Hallelujah. Let joy come into your life right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not by might or power, but by my spirit, saith God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sisters, start to praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Lord, let the work begin tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my sister tonight. Lord Jesus, use my sister. Jesus, tonight, let the joy, let joy come over my sister tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you want God to do for you? right now. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Praise the Lord. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Use my sister in a ministry as never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the little child tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even tonight, Lord, let the work begin. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for my brother. Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for victory tonight. Right now, say yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise Him. And I'd just like to encourage everybody to help Brother Marjo tonight and his efforts to help reach the teenagers, the narcotics, the young people in the highways and hedges. How many of you believe it's a worthy cause? Say amen. God bless you, Marjo. Praise I want everyone to stand to your feet. Would you get out your checkbook tonight? Would some of you get out $5 or $10? Bring what you would for Jesus tonight. Come on.
nice to see you. I appreciate you. All you need is faith in God. Jesus. I just want to mention, I told you tonight about my testimony. I have a record album here that has recorded messages of when I was four, six, and eight years old. Now listen, if you don't have this, you should definitely get it because a lot of people, they say, what could a little child say? There's a message on here, hell with the lid off, that there's been literally thousands of people who have been saved by just hearing this message. This, this is a business and you know you don't you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick or as the, the evangelists say it's a it's a, a ministry like the, it's incredible they'll say oh brother so and so he's got the ministry of laying on of hands or he's got the ministry of prophecy but that's a gimmick and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good and i mean i used one time i had a thing where there's a special kind of ink you can buy and you put it on and with perspiration, when the salt starts to come out and you start to perspire, uh, it'll turn red. And so I painted a cross, you know, I just did a cross like this in my head. And while I was preaching, uh, the cross started to show immediately. People started nudging each other, you know, and of course it started, it went away, I think, after a while. It only lasts so long where I wipes away, I don't remember. But afterwards, I mean, like I had that whole audience at one of the biggest meetings that I've ever had because they saw that cross and said, oh, Brother Marge, while you were preaching tonight, the cross was over your head. I mean, that was convinced them, you know that it was really very, very real and it made it very easy for me to uh, take offerings and, and receive money. When I went out back on the circuit, I hadn't preached since, you know, I was 13 or 14 years old. I sort of had to prove myself all over again. That's why my, my meetings have only really gotten good about the past year. And I know even though I, I dress what I was considered conservatively, you know, comb my hair back, put on a suit and tie, when I would go to a pastor's church where I hadn't preached before, and they'd sort of look me over and wonder, you know, what was I really going to say? What was I really like? And I'd sort of have to just cool it till I got up on the platform and they saw that I did say all the, the things they wanted to hear. And I just sort of was, have to put myself into really getting along with it like I enjoy it. Well, the restaurants, God, the restaurants. Imagine what it's like to have to go out and eat at Fish's Big Boy every night. <laughs> You're well, my I'm favorite kind of, church. No, I'll tell you that all the churches I go to, you got the, you're my favorite church. Well, you're really our favorite evangelist, but we don't want anybody to know it. <laughs> we don't want you to get a big head or anything. Yeah, we want to keep you humble. Okay. Well, I've, I've been kept poor so far. So. <laughs> 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 you no, know what I started to, you mentioned about Dallas. I was going to say one thing I really like about coming to your church is the fact, you know, the way that you treat me and so honestly and financially and my youth crusades. To, the one church that I went to in Dallas, they, you know, gave me a rough way to go. It's, it's really? amazing how many, you know, pre some preachers that there are, it's amazing. Well, you still, know, you should have raised your voice. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many preachers nowadays, though, that but you, you can't only have them, you know, once. And after that, uh, you can't have them back because they're not honest. And they don't treat the people right either, you know. Yeah. And if they don't treat the people right, then the people won't back them up. Well, actually, that's the reason we have That's one thing that we appreciate about your ministry. You've always blessed our people. You've been They know when you tell them something, they believe it. Yeah, that's true. I think nowadays people have seen so much, see so much happen. They can they can tell one of these shysters when they come to because they've heard everything, you know. They'll listen a couple nights and they won't say anything, you know, but they can tell after a while. Yeah, they're not dumb. You know, people are intelligent nowadays. They Right. There's there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies. And he told me how he did it. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table, back and forth at me, and, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on, this station is over 40 states, and, uh, 
He'll go on there and he'll get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight, that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you have never known before. And then he comes back to me and he tells me, he says, if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time, you've got thousands of people listening, the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar and so if you even get you know if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you that's two grand that you've made just like that and so you know if you're going to get into big time religion this is the games you've got to play things like that it's a it's a you go into it as a business and you work it as a business you know do you know he he prints over one million magazines a month I mean, he sends out. I don't know. He's got the biggest, he, biggest mailing list. One right? million. He has one million names and addresses, and he sends out right. magazines. Now, free. Yeah. In fact, if you want to get started, he even he sells names off his mailing list. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got right. so all over the country. I know some other preachers. I was that talking to him. They've got, got mailing, uh, list, mailing list from him. He's got over a hundred thousand names Roger, in Southern you California. Some of that. Melons and things like that. Oh, in California. Let Maryland serve. My beautiful salad. And I thought about uh, getting that for the convention. I figured uh, have them print it just uh, sort of like a his magazine. Well, they print that all on one sheet. You want to see his presses? I'm saying to me, he's got three, uh, three big presses. Three big presses. Yeah. You know, everyone makes it with their magazine. You send out your magazine. The magazine, you show pictures of what you're trying to do, and then you raise dollars for uh, projects, mainly what you, the projects you do, like. They raise money for missionary projects, say, to go to Haiti, but they'll take in tens of thousands of dollars and maybe only spend a few thousand. So you work that as a business. Then you follow up uh, from your magazine and your radio you use to build and you go into one or two night crusades and auditoriums. And the crusades, uh, you don't plan in the auditoriums. You don't make a lot of money from this, but it makes the personal contact. But the main money comes from uh, the magazines and from... Uh, the radio uh, program, you know, and but that's like a thing you've got to stay in it all the time. It's like the ones who are successful, they're just they're businessmen who are constantly. They're like you know, they're like Madison Avenue uh, PR men. I want to go to Korea. When are they going to go there? Why don't speaker. you come keep our church in October while we go to Brazil? I might do that. Then I can go. Okay, really? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I want her to go. I want to go too, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how, much, how much property do you have over there? Well, we bought 800 acres. Okay. All jungle. Have you developed any of it? Or? Yeah. We've got about, uh, oh, I'd say... Anybody want some more salad? We've got about 50 acres in cultivation. You know, rice, beans, corn. Yeah. And, well, I heard uh, something. What was it? That someone wanted to buy it? Or? Yes, as a but, preacher wanted to buy. We're building well, a Bible school, and he wants to then buy we got all a, of it. Then we got a deal with, project. on with a big uh, food company, you know, uh, that makes cornflakes and stuff like that, a big mill. They, they want, want to buy part a of piece of, well, a piece of property that I have, because I have a waterfall and a dam. When the place is filled with people, your yeah, echo goes better, way sure, down sure. because it's much better. Sure. But see, we have a good thing. We'll probably get a good audience down here too because uh, those speakers don't reach as far, and we can move the mics way back. With the music, the song service record everything. Yeah. Because yeah. it's from the, the music is incredible. How big is the choir going to be? 
I don't know how many seats are there. Are they going to fill this? Oh, yeah. Out of sight. <laughs> There's a little thing that she does that you got to be ready for. She test her. She'll go. Come on. And then think about the word that said everything. Just like, can't you feel the presence? Feel good. She keeps doing that, but she, you know, she plays the thing. It's like the sound you hear when you're on acid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's Quiet. heavy into acid, just for time. <laughs> long enough to hear this testimony. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we come here for, is to worship God. We don't come to put on a fashion show. This is a, a general love offering, an expense offering for the Lighthouse Church budget. We do have a heavy budget. And we don't, we don't use God's money for foolishness. We just don't. And I said, Lord, it would be so nice, but I don't ask for it. I just thought about it. But somehow I believe, Sister Green, I've got his favor. A lady who hasn't seen me in 25 years wrote me a letter and said, Sister Taylor, I have promised God I'm giving Allie Taylor a, a whole acre of commercial property right on the highway 20 miles from Tampa, right close to the sun city of St. Petersburg. I'm going to give you a chance because the Lord's been talking to me to prove God this morning again. I have some slips made out. And it says, help me prove God for these blessings. Now, these are not for everybody. These are for a special few. 
These are for people that are going to sacrifice maybe some bills they need to pay. Or maybe it's that dress they needed to buy. Or maybe it's that fall coat that you've been laying away a little money on. But this morning you feel like it's time for you to prove God and make a sacrifice. Don't you come up here for this unless you've made a sacrifice. Now everything you give to God is not a sacrifice. It's your reasonable service to give every dime you can to the Lord. But when you take something that hurts, like I've done down through the years and like many of you have done and give to God, God will give you this morning what you stand before me for, for he spoke to me to do this. While they're coming, if you have approved me offering, I want you to fill out one of these slips. And then you're going to get in the other side and line up till I get there. Don't put it in the basket over there. Don't put an offering in the basket over there till I get there. Everybody march for this great general offering this morning. Get in this line if you have approved the offering. Line up over there. Oh, yes, Jesus. The sacrifice offering is on your left this morning. Just get in line. some questions and if the answer is yes he can I want you to yell it back at me as loud as you can let's try it one time let me hear you say yes he can, yes, he can. oh you can say it better than that say it again yes, all right listen to the question now can God deliver a dope addict yes, he can. can God deliver an alcoholic yes, can God deliver a homosexual? Yes, he can. can God heal the sick? Yes, he can. can God deliver now? Yes, he can. Say it again. Say now. now. Lift up your hands and praise Him. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all. My God shall supply all. He shall supply all. All my need. All my need. All my need. That means all. All when you're down on the ground, when you're up against the wall, when you're low down in the place, my God shall supply all, 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 all my need. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh. I feel a tingling in my bosom. Hallelujah. I feel a chill going up and down my spine because I know that there's hope. I said I know that there is hope. Can you praise the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. There is hope.
as screwed up as it is, they get into it a little bit, and I have to admire them for that. I mean, if I was going to pick a religion uh, of, of, you know, Christian-type religion, that I had to go into one of them. I mean, thank God I don't have to. But if I had to go into one of them, I would, you know, pick the Pentecostal faith because some of the churches, the music is just great. And uh, the people are interesting, you know, they're kind of weird. Uh, and it's okay, you know, it's of, of, for the church things, it's, it's a little farther out. Glory G to Beezus. I worked for 75 cents an hour with a pick and shovel, and I preached on Sundays and pastored the church. And I said, because I was faithful, God's now given me a Cadillac. Hallelujah. And I said, I'll tell you something else. God would have something wrong with him if he didn't, because Jesus Christ himself said that no man hath forsaken houses or lands or fathers or mothers or brothers or friends, except that he'll get a hundredfold more in this life and in the life to come eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. He said he'd do it, and if he didn't do it, there'd be something wrong with God's word. I said, now I'm driving a Cadillac. Why don't you do it? Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus is real. How many can say man? Yeah. And you know, I got to thinking about that all day long, and I've been trying to trade for a Chevrolet, and I couldn't get a Chevy. I tried to trade for a Buick, and I couldn't get a Buick. And I said, bless God, the more I think about that, the more I think I was preaching the truth. I went down to the Cadillac agency, and one hour later, I drove out a new Cadillac. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I said this. I said, son, you know, i got some little kids. Well, they're not so little anymore. They're growing up. And I said, whenever I get ready to go, and I'm not going to be around any longer, who do you think I'm going to leave my things to? I'm not going to give them to somebody that I don't know. I'm going to leave them to my kids. And that's what my daddy did. That's what my daddy did. Hallelujah. Father created these things for his people if they'll use them right. Bless God, I'm going to drive that Cadillac down here and get it dusty and dirty and use it for God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Reverend Vernon Gordon is with us tonight, who is the father of Marjo. And through the years, he taught and trained and prayed that the Holy Ghost would always anoint this young man. We're so happy to have the father also of Reverend Marjo here with us tonight, and I'm going to ask him to introduce him. I'm so thankful that we have men of this caliber, and I think we ought to give them both a great big hand to sing on tonight. God bless you as you come. Thank you very much. It's a real privilege to be here tonight. I'd like to say a word about Marjo before I introduce him. He's the fourth generation of preachers. His great-grandfather, my grandfather, was one of the first missionaries that went to Liberia, West Africa, with Bishop Taylor of the Methodist Episcopal Church. He died and was buried there. My father began to preach the gospel when he was just a young man, 16 years of age. And I began to preach the gospel when I was about 19 years of age. But Marjo began to preach the gospel when he was only four years of age. I remember when Marjo was just five years old, when he received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Did you ever see anybody receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost when they were taking a bath? Well, that's what Marjo was doing. He was in the bathtub taking a bath. 
I heard some noise going on in there, and I looked in, and there he was with his hands up, praising the Lord and speaking in heavenly languages, in tongues that he knew nothing about. See, we've never had a father-son type relationship because he won't talk. Uh, about the time when I was a child. So our relationship is completely uh, a lot of voids in it because when we see each other, we're like walking on needles, you know, and uh, we have nothing really to say to each other. We talk about his trees and his yard and different things, but there's no communication at all. If I were God, I would send every man, woman, boy or girl, pastor, preacher, every person who professed salvation but yet didn't have a burning desire to win souls, I would send them to hell. Oh yes, I would. And I would let them remain among that sea of lost humanity until they had a burning desire to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What if the vast number of Christians right in our own community would just sow the precious seed of God's word to those right around them? Was it not the wise man Solomon that said, Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Brother, what do you suppose Solomon meant by that? Take a loaf of wonder bread and hostess Twinkies and throw it in the Mississippi and after a few months find it in the Gulf of Mexico? No, sir, I don't think so. If I hadn't gotten into evangelism heavily, I would have probably, like, maybe been a rock singer because I enjoy, you know, moving on stage, working a microphone, and I've watched certain rock performers perform, and a lot of things I do, you know, I've copied off of them or, or gotten in, you know, like Mick Jagger, certain things that I do, I, I sort of do like a waist punching thing that he does sometimes. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. We gotta watch out for these professional shouters. Can you say amen? Some people, I'll tell you, the minute the music starts, anyone that's in the spirit, you better watch out. Because they gotta do the boogaloo or they gotta do the front. They got their own little thing. That's not the spirit, man. That's carnal. Come on. Hallelujah. You're not liking this, but I'm telling you the truth, and you know it. It all comes down to, do you know who Jesus really is? I said, do you know who Jesus really is? His name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Think about that. He was divinity, but he put on humanity. Why did he pray? He prayed because he was human. But brother, sister, he answers prayer because he is divine. Oh, why did he rest? He took rest because he was human. Oh, but he gives us rest because he is divine. Why did he thirst? He was thirsty because he was human. But he satisfies our thirst because he is divine. Why did he sleep? He slept because he was human. But he gives us rest because he is divine. He took part of human nature so that we might take part of his divine nature. He became poor so that we might become rich. He bore a cross so that we might wear a crown. He lived in a manger so that we might live in a mansion. Do you know who Jesus really is? Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Him tonight. Lift up your hands and praise Him tonight. Worship Him tonight. Oh, is there any holes in your net tonight? Let Jesus fix it for you. Let Jesus fix it for you. Oh, let your prayer and I will be Lord. Lord, make me a soul winner. Lord, that you will use me. Lord, that you will use me in some way. Lord, let me be a soul winner for your work. Not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Hallelujah. I just want to see the hands tonight. Did you play that song, He Touched Me? I can't get up and say to them, okay, now listen, if you just believe this afternoon, I mean, it's all got to be done under the thing of uh, Jesus, and uh, which even that's okay. Like, you know, the Jesus thing I would leave, but they still, I've got to put in that thing, like, if you don't come down, you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn, and you've got to go into the sin thing. It's the, the way that I have to do it. If I could just do, like, the faith number and get up and say, okay, you know, everybody, let's really get loose this afternoon. And, get off and get rid of all of our hang-ups and have nice group therapy that would be great but you can't do it that way i've got to it's got to all be done under this facade of holiness for something something happened it's gonna happen and now thank god thank god i know oh he touched me and Sing it again tonight. Oh, Jesus, touch me. tonight is going to be your night. God. God is going to be You're spoiling the book. You know, God is going to do something for you. Then I'll turn around to the crowd and I'll say everyone, do you believe it? And you know, everyone say yes, you know. I said, that's not enough, but there's no faith here tonight. I can't do anything. You've got to believe it. And I go, do you believe it? And then by this time, the crowd's go, yes. And I'll say, sister, as I lay my hands on you, it's going to happen. By this time, you're just like this, you know. Because <laughs> I do a whole thing on you. Then, you know, I sort of like get down to, now I'm going to pray the prayer, and everyone bow your heads. And all of a sudden, they go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, this time, that the shock doesn't get you. <laughs> How do you feel? Then once you get one or two, once that you get one or two that really come off and say, yeah, I really felt that, you know, I had a bad back or had a bad leg, then there's a whole slew say, oh, yeah, I feel better, too, because like 90% of it's psychosomatic. I feel better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the name of Jesus, let the work be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love him tonight? Then sing it like you mean it. Oh, how, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. One more time, sing it again tonight. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. 
cross because he first loved me. Well, praise the Lord. Tremendous, tremendous. He's a born preacher. He's a he's a he's a boy. He's just a preaching machine. But it's an American God. He is and of God divine, no question. We got to give the Lord all the credit and the glory. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Just going in and out of the two lives, it's you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. What can I say? Sometimes I feel like I should get up and do repentance to the audience or something, you know. It's like I have these fantasies. A lot of times you go through like I'd really like to get up and uh just tell them what I really think or where, you know, where I'm really at, what I'd like them to do. Then when I get up, you know, I go right into my sermon. But things like this relieve my head at the time, but I've been playing with that now for a couple of years, and I just can't go on doing it like that anymore. I made my decision that I was going to uh, get out. I don't know. Well, actually, I've been making it for two years, but then meeting after meeting comes along, and I just seem to like, I don't know, you get up tight financially and I have to go back, but uh, the movie or no movie, I definitely would have to get out because I'm at a point, you know, like I said, where I either have to make the decision to go on and really do it all the way or else uh, get out. And, you know, I know I have to get out, so I'm, I guess you'd say I'm on my last meetings right now, my last leg, so to speak. But enjoy getting it off on stage, but... I really wish I was getting it off as a rock star, an actor or something, which I have to get into. I think, you know, so, some people would probably think that maybe I'm an evil person. Uh, I, I sort of like to think that I'm bad, but not evil. Well, I am a hype, but I don't feel that I'm really a bad hype. I don't know, there's kind of a fine, there's a, there's a difference, or to me there's a difference, but for me to stay in it at this point, I would have to say, you know, just screw it all. I'm going to do it the very best. I'd have to drop all the good things that I do say in some of my songs, few good things. But I kind of feel that maybe uh, some of the things that I've done, preaching the last, not as a child. As a child, I'm not responsible for, I feel. But I still do feel, though, that that whole psychological thing when I was a child had a heavy influence, of course, on me. I would never have gone back the last few years had it not been for uh, the childhood. But still, you know, I was an adult or sort of a grown person when I went back into it, so I'm responsible for that. And so maybe that's bad, you know, that, maybe that's bad. But, you know, what my, my going back into it and obviously saying things that I don't believe, anyone that does that is kind of bad, maybe. But then, you know, a lot of people do bad things. I haven't been together with Agnes that long a couple of months, but oh, it's just such an incredible relief to be able to feel that you can trust someone. When I first met Marjo, the first thing he did was take me to his house and show me his book and all his clippings and play his record and from about 2.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning, he just kept telling me and telling me everything, and it was so heavy. I was like drained. I just said, boy, this is really a trip. And I couldn't believe that here was this guy who I thought was really nice and sane and sweet and everything good. Um, who had been through this crazy trip when he was a kid, and he wasn't crazy. It was, I didn't, you know, I thought, this couldn't be the same person, but here were all these pictures and all these clippings, and it's him, all right. And it's still a little bit hard to believe, even though now I see him preaching. He's like two different people. Every time I watch him, it's like I'm really watching a play. It's not something that's real. I'm just watching a performance. Uh, of an actor who goes home and lives a totally different life. I feel that everybody around me feels the same way in a congregation. Uh, I don't know all this uh, Jesus business. I mean, I, I just find it hard to believe that they believe it too. Do you think Marjo's a con man? Con man? 
turn. What can I say? I think religion is, uh, it's a drug. <laughs> it's addicting. <laughs> can God deliver a religion addict? <laughs> Can God deliver a dog? Oh, yes, he can. <laughs> can God deliver a little black lovey like this? Oh, yes, he can. Folks, tonight, this little dog needs your prayers. I want someone in the congregation to help me out. Sister, would you come here? Lay hands on this dog. The Bible says they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And tonight, this little dog is going to be touched. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> In the name, in the name of Jesus, you little dog. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. Baby, don't be scared, baby. Poor little thing. Poor little thing. See, he's got the Holy Ghost. He's much better. <laughs> Holy Ghost, this dog wasn't walking like this before. Notice the way he staggers now. <laughs> he's truly delivered. Look at him. He's, he's touched. He's made every miracle, miracle. Look what God has done. Hallelujah. It's a miracle. <laughs> Look at this little dog. He came in in a wheelchair. Now he's delivered. Come on, little dog. Show the folks. Folks, this is it. See what God has done. There it is. Living proof. It's happened before your very eyes. God has done a miracle. God is in this place tonight. God has worked through his servant and done something wonderful again. Now I want you to get out your dollars and we're going to give money tonight to kill a commie for Jesus. We're going to fight communism so the little dogs like this can be set free. Everyone, get out your money. Come on, get it out your... Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. I feel good. <laughs> hallelujah. I've got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. I've got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be. Fix it for me. Some folks wonder how I can smile, even though I'm going through trial. How can I have a song when everything seems to be going wrong? I don't worry, I don't fret. My God has never failed me yet. Troubles come from time to time, but that's all right. I'm not the worrying kind because I've got confidence. God is gonna see me through, no matter what the case may be, I know he's gonna fix it for me, I've got confidence, God is gonna see me through, no matter what the case may be, I know he's gonna fix it for me. God bless you and you and you. He had barely learned to walk when they taught him how to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Barely learned to walk when they taught him how to pray. Mm -hmm. But they never said who he was praying to. Never made a deal with the devil anyway. Never made a deal with Jesus anyway. No one could say he wasn't any good.
we'll gather by the river where the grace of God flows on. Gather by the river where the grace of God goes on.